Good evening, everyone. Hope all is well, and I hope you're geared up for the weekend. It's Friday. It's weekend time. But right now, we are going to go live with a gentleman who's based in the U.S. who funds property deals, development deals, and we're going to know about all of that through him. And we're going to be discussing that with Peter Sylvester. Go send. It's going to be good discussing um, property business, how are things in the U.S. right now, um, what's happening in terms of the economy, and what kind of deals do they uh, fund. So here we go, Peter. Hello. Hello. Hi, Peter. How are How's you this morning? I'm doing great. Good, good, good. good. All is well. So, uh, Peter, firstly, thank you so much for coming on this live, for joining me and sharing the knowledge, spreading the positivity during these times that we're in and giving inspiration to youngsters, teenagers, people who are in their prime, entrepreneurs, businessmen of how to go about and build a professional career. So thank you so much for coming on here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Uh, Peter, before we start, if you can introduce yourself as to who you are and what exactly is it that you do. Okay. My name is Peter Sylvester, and uh, I've started a, a number of companies uh, right now um, go by Sylvester commercial real estate investing. How about that? And that's what fits best right in this moment. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a great career of first started off as a realtor back in 2010. Sure. And I, I did that uh, due to, you know, looking around and seeing that the economy was changing quite a bit. It was really yeah. contracting in a lot of ways. And, and uh, for the creative types that I, that I was. And, and I saw limited job growth. So I figured that that's it. I got to step out and create something myself. Absolutely. And, and I knew the, I followed the richest people in the world uh, came from real estate or from deal making. Okay. Uh, aside from some of the really wealthy people that we know, like uh, the the uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and such like that. Outside of that, it's real estate, which really creates wealth for any type of person. Absolutely. Uh, from, the, from the poorest person to the richest person, it is the best vehicle for wealth. Absolutely. But before we move forward into uh, what you do currently, I want to take you a few years back into your childhood. You know, when we were growing up as kids and like, uh, we see a lot of careers in front of us, possibly our parents, our uncles, aunties, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they're possibly going, becoming a doctor, lawyer, uh, architect, an engineer, a musician, it can be an actor. I mean, did you have any of those aspirations or from the start you were sort of business driven, uh, entrepreneur driven, and that's what you wanted to be? It was funny, I, I was really good at drawing three dimensional homes when I was about three or so. Okay. You know, normally when you're a kid, you draw a kind of two dimensional, weird, weird looking structure. <laughs> yeah. And, and I actually had a three dimensional way of looking at things and way of describing it through drawing. And my father was an aerospace engineer, but, um, you know, I wasn't really drawn to creating planes or that sort of thing. And, uh, so it, I was always drawn to real estate, even as a kid. And, and we lived in a flat roofed house, very modern house, even back in the, in the sixties, which is okay. quite unusual at the time. Yep. And any, every house had about two acres and it was really idyllic wow. type of place. And I mean, there, I mean, in, 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 in London to get one acre is like, yeah, you've made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my parents came from England. So, okay. Uh, yeah, it, 
and uh, going back to see my grandmother in a row house, well, you didn't have a side yard. You had a front yard and a backyard. Absolutely. That's it. That's all you get out here. And yeah. people are happy with that, right? Uh, so coming into your sort of educational career, I mean, what did you study at college, university? What did you get up to there? Oh, well, I took some classes in accounting and psychology. Okay. Uh, so really, it was just a thought and a following of other people in real estate and nothing really, uh, uh, no studies associated with that as, as far as uh, some, some uh, what do you call it, some courses, some, you know, pay to play kind of courses. Okay. But nothing official until it came time to... Uh, near 2010 when I said, I, I, I got to change. I got to help create wealth for others. And I know it will come back to me. And I knew that was through real estate. So then I, I went out, got a, a license, a study like crazy and to pass it the first time around. And even once I did that, it was never enough. And, and I stress to always keep learning. And so I sought out the best uh, people in the industry in my office to learn more and more about commercial real estate and, and really expand my career from then. Why did you choose commercial real estate uh, rather than residential uh, real estate? Well, having a license in, in real estate, first they tell you just go out and sell houses. And that's, that's fine. That, that does create wealth for people. Uh, but it seemed limiting to me and I wanted to just keep learning because I see many many people stuck in that residential real estate mode and it turns into more of a, a service business and not really uh, a wealth creation well business. wealth wealth generating business right um, and it seems self-serving for a lot of the agents so you see the license that you get in the US I mean in, in, in London for example Anyone can become a realtor. You don't need a license. It's not, I mean, there are other studies and courses that you do to, uh, to get the uh, accreditation to your name, but there's no such real license that you need to go out and study and, 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 and you need to do that. But, but in the US, so if someone gets a residential license, can they deal with commercial property or they just have to deal with residential property? The, no, they can. They can do commercial. It's just advised to get the help from others and surround yourself with more experienced, more intelligent people. And that's how you go about it. Cause it's, it, it's quite daunting when you, when people start asking you, well, what's the cap rate? What's this, what's, what's the internal rate of return. And so just to be comfortable in oneself, to be able to do that, you just keep going to meetings, commercial real estate meetings and uh, ask questions and, and just jump in it and do it and then learn as you go. When you say meetings, do you mean networking events and, and, yes. and, and going and meeting other, other, other realtors, other commercial real estate investors and uh, brokers? That's right. And okay. there is one official, uh, well, it's, it's expensive course, a CCIM. And I don't have a CCIM designation, uh, but I recommend it. And, or at least take some courses from CCIM because it's, it's like basically getting a doctorate degree in commercial real estate. Got you. I mean, uh, being a realtor in, in the U S is so intense, literally with what you're saying right now with all yeah. these courses and everything that you have to understand. Um, so when you got in, in 2010, right, we had just hit that financial crisis in 2008. Uh, right. When you got into the industry in 2010, how was it for you? Uh, were there a lot of challenges or was it like sort of easy sailing? No, it was, it was challenging because I talked to everybody about real estate and everybody wants to talk about real estate. It, I really uh, came out of my shell because I was doing something completely different, right? So, but in 2010, people were still very gun shy. They didn't want to pull the trigger. And at the time, again, I was just selling houses, right? So yeah. I would say, hey, come on, this is killer deal, killer deal. And they're like, no, no, no. 
So 2011 comes around and they're like, okay, 2012. All right. Yeah. I want to offer 20,000 less than asking. Nope. 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 It's not happening. Now we're talking about the time's gone. Rock it up. Exactly. You better like jump ahead of the curve and offer more than they're asking because this is going to skyrocket. And it did ever since. And how's the, how's the U S property market in terms of, uh, the world property market does, does the world like, for example, in the UK, right? If a property crash happens in Dubai, it's not going to affect the UK. But right. if a property crash happens in the US, it's still not going to affect the UK. UK is more of a sort of a stagnant market and people, that is why a lot of foreign investors come to the UK to invest their money into property because they know that over the time, it's not going to go down. It's going to stay stagnant or it's going to go up. How is yeah. it in the U.S.? Does it go up, down, up, down? Does the uh, overall global economy affect the U.S. Uh, uh, property market? Well, it, it's, there's so many factors involved. You know that you know about the 2008 crash, right? It of was course. all about selling all the derivatives and such, and it just created a tumbling effect for everybody. Uh, but if you just look at real estate by itself, there's so many markets that uh, there's some areas that are going to go down and some areas that are going to be skyrocketing up. And it is uh, takes a lot of really insight and research to figure out where to put your money. It's like if you look in the eastern, northeastern part of the states, if you just look at population and you see that it's decreasing, you know, you can't invest there because you can't increase the rents. Because of course. Once somebody trashes a place, move out, you got to spend let's say, X amount of money to do it up again, to bring it to that standard, to get it rented right. and all that hassle. And obviously during that time that you're doing it up, your property is vacant. So there's a void period. Yes. And then how are you going to get somebody to move in there when it's a de depleting population in those towns in the Northeast? Uh, you just have to look at the, the macro studies of population movement. And which brings us to Texas, right? Uh, a lot of the headquarters from around the country and even around the world have moved into Texas. Exactly. It's, it's quite exciting. As that's why I moved here out of Los Angeles. I was in Los Angeles from 88 all the way to March of this year, 2020. Wow. Yeah. And it's a long time. And, and but Los Angeles there, has has some of the best properties in, in, in the States. So why would you move from there to Texas, which is like more of a hot state close to um, the South? I mean, it's, it's super hot. I've been to, I was in Houston in 2015 and literally you cannot go out thinking that you're not going to sweat. It is really hot out there. So why would you move from Los Angeles coming to, to Texas? Well, I'll try not to get off topic too much and sound too crazy. <laughs> uh, we are in a biblical war and fine, think I'm crazy or look that up and then start to discover what's happening. But uh, if you if we just look at the 3D uh, human element, the, the taxes, the politics of California makes it unbearable. They are okay. really making it hard for for wealth to continue and they're taxing everything you could think of. And just being on the, in the real estate side, you go into the building and safety and you ask for permits and things. They really are tough on you and they come around and inspect properties. They look at the sat the Google satellite shots. They see that you put something new on your property. They come around knocking on your door and they give you fines and they wow. make you, yeah, they, they really harass you. You can't change something without permits. Is it, I mean, what you what I'm trying to get at with this and what you just mentioned, is it because, I mean, is California trying to make a lot of money out of people rather than yeah, other state, other states doing that? And why would they be doing that? I mean, do they want to drive people out of California? 
they don't care. Uh, Jerry Brown before, he says he could just keep raising taxes and people will still move. And he was right. They did. People kept moving into te- uh, California. And now it's to a point where uh, all these other things that were happening. And I don't I want let's focus on what was good, though, because I would have never thought to move to Texas. Right. But it so happened that I was in a self-development course that met in a different city every quarter. It was a team leadership management and self-development course, right? So we end up in Austin, and Austin is what everybody knows to be the liberal island in Texas, okay. so they say, right? Yeah. So it's, it seems like an easy place to go for Californians. And we went there, and we uh, spent another week, my wife and I, touring around and, and discovered it was very lovely, very, very nice. That, and they're Texas-friendly, there it was just really awesome and in, in a different way kind of modern way of thinking outside of the california way of thinking so we thought okay this is it this is yeah. great and then we uh and and we did the macro studies and to see what was going on there and again a thousand eight hundred companies coming to california and that was Back in 2018, they said that, right? Yeah, yeah. And even more and more are coming. Tesla is here. Yeah. And uh, Bay Systems is coming here, as well as Apple has a giant factory and so many other people, right? So then we come back again to Dallas. And then we like, Dallas is pretty cool. And it is really welcoming and friendly. Just everybody's really nice, right? And it has a different kind of atmosphere and feel. Uh, But then when we got here with this whole event that's going on around the world Austin is was not for us at all because it they're just asleep and going along with the narrative so we enjoy not even Dallas we enjoy another city just west of there called Fort Worth where people are down to earth have common sense understand the truth and everything (laughs) I get. I, I kind of understand where this conversation is going, but you know what? We'll 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 put yeah. that aside. I'm me and you. I'm on the same. I'm on the same boat as you. So so let's get back to real estate. Absolutely. So, then, so how 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 do you find the real estate market in 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 Texas different to the real estate market in California? Well, what's exciting? Uh, there's so many things exciting. First of all. People can, now people can live more remotely because technology is, is just so advanced. Now, taken, right? taken over. In the last, in the last, in the last three months. Right. It's gone from working in the office, coming and seeing your boss, your manager, saying hello, sitting down on the desk, you know, doing all the work. And now you're like, yep, I trust you. You can work from home. All of a sudden, that trust has come back again, you know, yeah. so... And even a year ago, when we were here in Austin, uh, at, in Austin, we were at this hotel, and I see this guy, and he was hanging out in the hot tub, and he just looked like he owned the place. And uh, so I got talking to him, and sure enough, he lived on the top floor of the hotel, and his job is in San Francisco. And he goes back there like every three months when he ha- absolutely has to, right? And he looks around at all his buddies who are also making 200,000 plus and they're poor, they're living poor. And he's living on the top floor of a downtown hotel, a downtown hotel within walking distance of the river in a hot tub, meeting strangers every day because they're coming into the hotel, just having the time of his life. Right. And he's still making San Francisco money. So this times, whatever amount you can imagine of employees being able to live wherever they want in this world. So long as they have an internet connection. Exactly. An internet connection and a phone. That's all you need. Right. So getting back to your question. So you can buy even a $150,000 house in Texas, which may look like not so exciting at all. Yeah. Is livable. And so, but 
more common terms, you would see me or more realistic terms, I should say, uh, 350 to 400,000 to even now we're starting to get luxurious. When I say 600,000, 700,000, we're talking about in some cities anyway, uh, really big, fine houses. If you're talking about Austin numbers, we're no, we're now getting near to LA numbers because a six hundred fifty thousand dollar house in Austin could be a two bedroom little early nineteen hundreds building. Wow. Yeah. So that's how expensive it is, and the prices are going up fast. Uh, if you go into the outskirts, which is still minutes outside of town, we're we're going back to that dollar amount that I'm talking about, like three hundred fifty to five hundred thousand. But every month, every week that goes by you're missing out on those numbers and the price because the are prices climbing. are going and climbing up. Yes. But wow. what we're doing is we're creating villages. We're buying large plots of land and, and then creating like a scheme, like a development, residential, commercial, you know, shopping sort of high street kind of thing. Well, what we're doing is creating something that's attainable, sustainable and uh, some people might think a little more hippie type. Uh, we're talking like tiny houses, RV parking with uh, resort style activities with like gotcha. large pools, and beaches or river fun, river activities, something okay. that's like Texas related. And yet, again, you could work from your phone, enjoy this really low key. Uh, reduced expense living yep and you're still making whatever you're making but this is attainable so even people that don't make a two hundred three hundred thousand a year could afford this same uh, fun lifestyle and really learn about keeping the earth clean and the houses are super carbon friendly there's no wood in the houses we're really talking about high-tech uh, and how much how much how much do these big plots of land cost in terms of building those villages and 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 what's well, the cost of building them yeah we're looking at uh anywhere from 20 to 40 acres depending on wow. the location we're talking about 2 million about that's not so, bad and yeah, and, 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 and 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 obviously you have to go through the planning and you have to submit your drawings to the local uh, authority, whatever it is. And, 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 and once they give you the planning, then you go out and build it, right? Yes, we're not, it's, it's not the same as having to deal with LA, right? The LA building and safety. We're talking about county because they're, they're not gonna be right inside the city. So they're yep. gonna be very lenient about what you do there. So it's, it's gonna be simple, very simple. Super. And in terms of dealing with the UK real estate, do you also do you also look into that or, or, or right now you're just concentrating on the US market? Right now I'm concentrating on this. However, I have over the last year or so uh, been in talks with people on a totally different subject now about selling hotels, large hotels. And there was one I missed out on. It was the Ritz in London. No way. That just got sold a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah. I was one of the first people to know about that. And I brought people to the table. It's just the sellers wanted way too much. They were, I don't know. It was I mean, sad. But they, still, but they still sold it. <laughs> they, yeah, but they didn't sell it for the price that they were saying they wanted, wanted back then. They were do you know how do you know how much did they want back then? 1.6 billion. And I think they sold it for 1 billion. No, it was like 800,000. 800, 800, 800 million. million. Yeah, 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 800 yeah. Million. Uh, so, so that was a big difference and that's why it, it didn't sell to my people. Cool. Well, it's good to it's good it's it's good to know that. I mean, I didn't know about that the Ritz was on for 1.6 billion, but it's good to know about that. But Peter, it's been a pleasure speaking to you in terms of what you do, how you do it, how have you found your way of generating wealth through real estate? It's been a pleasure speaking to you. But before you go, Peter, I do this with all my guests that come on here. You know, we've gone through a lot of negativity. 
a lot of false news because you're on the same boat i can say this to you yeah. um what positive advice would you like to share with the world today so that they can take that on board and move forward in life okay anytime you hear negative talk really look at it as low vibrational and ask why and then really seek out if people are speaking positive just look at it as a positive and then discover why they're speaking positive and always seek the path of positivity and even though it might be uncomfortable because you've been surrounded and and embedded with media talking yeah, about yeah, stuff yeah, yeah 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 keep seeking the path of positivity meditate seek god in whatever form that works for you what universe whatever you want to call it yep yeah. always look to your higher self to the higher vibrations and if you intentionally look to that you will find truth and as uncomfortable as it may be at this time truth is needed and just sit back just sit with it in your heart in your soul and keep seeking out again high vibration positive people positive messages positive statements and keep asking why 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 and follow the path to truth absolutely but thank you so much for coming on here sharing thank that you, with sir. us today it's been amazing talking to you especially talking about different state real estates and how the how the uh the market and the price um uh, works in the US it's been an absolute pleasure knowing that thank you so much have a great day you too peter take care love and safety to you bye 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 so that was peter silvester who is a realtor based in texas in the united states dealing with different kinds of properties in uh, the US and if you're interested in investing in the US go and check Peter's uh, Instagram LinkedIn out and I'm sure if you have a query about it I'm sure he'll be able to help you thank you so much to Peter for joining me today thank you to all the viewers that tuned in it's been a pleasure to have you it's friday enjoy your weekend whatever you're doing take care bye